Hey, what's up guys and welcome to the video. Today's vehicle is a 2012 Dodge Ram that the owner uses when he's out hunting. This thing is full of mud, full of pet hair. And yeah, that's blood. But don't worry, it's just Adam blood. All right, so taking a look around this truck and besides all the blood in the box, there is a ton of caked on dirt and mud on the running boards, the wheels, and then the back of the truck is so dirty, it's hard to even tell what color this thing is. Now moving inside, and what hits you first is the insane amount of dog hair in here. I have never seen this much in a vehicle before, and it's going to be a big challenge to get it all out of here. And if you can look past all the dog hair, which is kind of hard, the rest of the interior is dirty and grimy almost everywhere you look. And now just before we jump into the video guys, take a quick second and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos like this one. All right guys, it's time to get started on transforming this truck. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Okay, so I just wanted to welcome you to the video again and say that finally, finally, someone brought me a truck to detail that isn't a Silverado or Sierra, so I'm definitely excited to work on something different today. Moving to the wheel wells, and I'm already a fan of Dodge because they don't use carpeted wheel well liners like the GM trucks do. So getting these sprayed out is nice and easy. Only takes a minute compared to the five plus it would take if they were carpeted. Now you may have noticed in the opening shots, but these rims have a fairly deep crevice right at the lip. It was full of dirt, so I made sure to hit it at the right angle, to make sure I got all the dirt out. All right, so time to tackle the blood in the box here. And having never dealt with blood on a vehicle before, I wasn't sure how easy it would be to remove. So fortunately, this truck spray and liner is impervious to blood stains, so the pressure washer was able to make pretty quick work of it. Now for the wheels and tires, I'm using some Meguiar's non-acid wheel and tire cleaner, and this comes in a concentrate and can be diluted between one to one and two to one. I usually use it closer to two to one though, as I find it cuts through dirt and brake dust really well, so I don't typically need it stronger than that. So 
So with the truck covered in nice thick foam, it's the perfect time to go around with a detail brush, get in all those places that the wash mitt is going to miss. It only takes two minutes and really can be the difference between having a perfectly clean vehicle when you're done or opening the gas door a few days later and realizing that you missed a spot. So for these floor mats, as usual, I'm hitting them with the pressure washer and surprisingly the carpeted inserts weren't really holding too much dirt in them, nor did they have any dog hair trapped in them, so that was nice. Once they're sprayed off, I'll use some all-purpose cleaner diluted 4 to 1 and my soft wheel brush to really make sure they're clean. Moving to the interior and the first thing to do is remove any personal items left in the vehicle, though seeing the roll of duct tape and knowing there was a pile of blood in the back, that's a tad suspect. <laughs> I should also mention that the customer specifically asked me not to go into any of the compartments to remove things and clean, which is a bit of an unusual request, so if you're curious why you didn't see me emptying them out or cleaning them, that's why. Alright, so before I can do anything else in here, I need to deal with the ridiculous amount of dog hair on the underside of the rear seats. So using my lily brush, I'm able to pull piles and piles of it out. Although with there being so much in here and the fact that there really isn't a firm backing underneath this fabric, it did take a fair bit of time to get all the hair out. Now I feel like this was probably a worst case scenario for this brush, but honestly without it, I would have been here all day with anything else. So if you guys have ever struggled with pet hair in your vehicle or at home, I've got the link to the lily brush down in the description and I would highly recommend picking one up as they work really, really well and are very reasonably priced too. Now, while I lose my mind trying to get every single hair out of here, I wanted to mention that I've been asked a ton over the past few months to do a Q&A vid, and I am happy to say that the video is done and it's up over on my second channel, The Detail Geek 2. It's the first link in the description, so head over there after this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see additional content. I'm going to try to post new videos there as often as I can, hopefully weekly.
So again, you guys can see how well this Lily brush works even when there's an obscene amount of hair. And if you're curious why the dust buster was in here, the clip that holds this cover down was stuck. So I was just using it to hold it down in the previous shot. Here's the giant fur ball I made with all the hair the lily brush pulled out of here. Although this was probably only about 75% of it as a ton of it was vacuumed up too. All right, so unfortunately, at least in my opinion, the floor mats did a really good job of protecting the carpet. So only the driver's and passenger's foot wells need to be extracted, although they were still fairly dirty. So the carpet solution that I use is Chemical Guys Fabric Clean diluted down to about 20 to 1 as it comes in a concentrate and after letting it sit for a minute I'll agitate with the drill brush and then start sucking it all the way with the extractor. And if you want to have a look at any of these products like the drill brush or the Bissell Spot Clean Professional I use, I've got the link to these and almost every other product and tool that I use down in the description. Now turning to the interior trim and after spraying on a bit of APC diluted 10 to 1, a detail brush makes it super easy to get into the vents and get the dust out and then I'll quickly wipe off any excess cleaner with a dry microfiber towel. Now one tip I have is when you're cleaning the gear shifter to make sure you put the key in so you can move it through the various gears so you can make sure the entire thing is clean because just like cleaning behind the gas door, there is nothing worse than detailing your car and realizing you've missed a spot or having the customer pick their vehicle up, put it in drive to leave, and they see all the dirt that you missed.
Now using 303's aerospace protectant, I'm applying it to all the interior plastics, not just the door panels and dash, but things like this cover, plastic pieces under the seats, inside the glove box and console, basically anywhere that I can see or reach will get 303 applied. Even though I know that my customers aren't likely to notice that, it's just how I operate and I couldn't deliver a vehicle back that wasn't as perfect as I could make it. Time to make this black paint super glossy. So for that, I'm using my Meguiar's Mirror Glaze Synthetic Sealant, which should last around six months. Keep this truck's paint protected through the winter until spring. All right, so you guys might already know, but one of my favorite things is getting to apply 303 on tonneau covers because it makes them look so incredibly good. I don't think there's a better product out there to use on a cover to keep it UV protected and looking its best. Now for these big KO2 tires, I'm using this 303 high gloss tire shine since I think it will look better on this truck and with it being water-based, don't have to worry about it slinging off, but do have to wipe any overspray off the rim. All right guys, and nine hours later, I've got this Dodge Ram looking absolutely incredible again. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Enjoy the guitar outro, and I'll see you guys in the next one.